Putin would push the United States into World War III if nuclear weapons were released at a dangerous moment in recent weeks, Russia under Vladimir Putin has undertaken nuclear-powered military drills. A former U.S. Navy admiral has warned that the deployment of nuclear weapons by Vladimir Putin might compel the administration of Joe Biden to interfere in the Ukraine conflict. Russia has undertaken missile drills, the most recent one possibly including testing a new nuclear-powered torpedo. Admiral Mike Mullen, now retired from the United States Navy, said that a nuclear attack on Ukrainian territory would trigger a full-fledged Third World War. Admiral Mike Mullen, now retired from the United States Navy, said that the current era is tricky, and this battle must finish without the employment of these weapons. I am concerned that if these weapons are released, we will be on the verge of World Fight III and a war with Russia, not only between Ukraine and Russia. The United States and Russia are involved. Despite mounting internal pressure on Vladimir Putin, the retired admiral expressed confidence that the Russian leader would remain in office. According to him, the only way the conflict will cease is via a negotiated solution between Ukraine and Russia. I feel Putin will remain in power. Many want his departure. Admiral Mullen said, I do not believe that will occur. Every conflict eventually ends. Typically, every battle concludes via negotiations. In addition, standards and restrictions must be established before Putin becomes so desperate that he would pull the trigger on a nuclear bomb. In recent weeks, Russia's nuclear-powered vessel drills have created the specter of a possible deployment of nuclear weapons. The United States reportedly observed a modified cruise missile submarine capable of launching uncrewed underwater vehicles, including the Poseidon torpedo, for special operations. In his latest caution to President Vladimir Putin against escalating the conflict, Vice President Joe Biden said Russia would commit a grave error if it deployed a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine. In response to a query concerning Russia's intentions, Biden said he had devoted much time today to discuss this matter. Biden said that if Russia used a tactical nuclear bomb, it would be committing a grave error. I cannot confirm if it is a false flag operation. We cannot say. It would be a severe error. Premier Li Keqiang of China emphasized the irresponsibility of nuclear threats, indicating Beijing's discomfort with its strategic ally Russia's nuclear rhetoric. An anonymous United States source told Reuters that at the East Asia Summit on Sunday, Mr. Lee emphasized sovereignty, the irresponsibility of nuclear threats, and the need to guarantee that nuclear weapons are not deployed as some have urged. The source noted that it is also incontestable that China is likely both astonished and perhaps a little humiliated by the conduct of Russian military activities. The warning comes as inhabitants of the southern Ukrainian city of Kherson celebrate the end of Russia's eight-month occupation. The veto was overridden, and Russia was obliged to pay for the Ukraine conflict. While the United Nations resolution is not legally enforceable, it signifies a worldwide shift against Russia. Despite Vladimir Putin's best attempts to dodge consequences for beginning the conflict, the General Assembly of the United Nations has adopted a resolution calling for Russia to be held responsible for its invasion of Ukraine and violation of international law. Such consequences include the dictatorship's payment of reparations. The Security Council, which consists of 15 members, is the most influential body of the United Nations. Since the conflict started on February 24th, Putin has been able to use his veto to prevent the Security Council from adopting any action against Russia. Still, he has no such authority inside the General Assembly, which has already supported for resolutions critical of the invasion. Today's resolution, which passed with overwhelming support, recognizes the need to create an international framework for compensation for damage, loss, or harm caused by Russia's illegal actions against Ukraine. Members of the Assembly are asked to collaborate with Ukraine in establishing an international register to record claims and information on damage, loss, or harm to Ukrainians. General Assembly decisions, unlike Security Council resolutions, are not legally binding. However, they are seen as a representation of global opinion and have shown considerable opposition to Russia's military involvement. It will also assist in boosting Ukrainian morale and facilitating the reporting of war crimes and other damages by Kyiv. 
there were 73 abstentions out of 193 members that were eligible to vote. There were 94 votes in favor of holding Russia responsible and 14 votes against it. It is generally assumed that Russia would disregard the resolution. China, Belarus, North Korea, and Iran voted against it, with Iran recently delivering kamikaze drones to the Russian military. Turkey, seeking to retain neutrality in the conflict and a working relationship with the Kremlin, cast a significant vote to punish Russia. Before the voting, Ambassador of Ukraine to the United Nations Sergei Kislytsyo warned the assembly that Russia has sought to destroy Ukraine. Since day one, Russia has bombarded and shelled cities and villages, targeting everything from factories and plants to residential buildings, schools, hospitals, kindergartens, roads, bridges, and nearly half of Ukraine's power grid and utilities last month alone. In addition, he recounted tales of murder, rape, torture, forced deportations, and looting conducted by Russians on the seized land. Kislytsia said Ukraine would face the arduous job of reconstructing the nation and recovering from this conflict. However, this healing can never be complete without a feeling of justice for the Russian war's victims. However, Vasily Nabenzia, Russia's ambassador to the United Nations, urged assembly members to vote against the resolution. He described it as an effort to legalize something that, according to current international law, cannot be legalized and said that it was legally invalid. Mr. Nabenzia accused the West of doing everything it can to provide a veneer of legitimacy to start freezing Russian assets, or what he referred to as stolen Russian assets, even accusing the General Assembly decision of acting as a veil to conceal this open robbery. He cautioned that approval of the resolution would only increase tension and insecurity in the entire world and claimed that supporters of the answer would be implicated in the illegal takeover of the sovereign assets of a third nation. Russia's host issues a warning. To prevent surrender, the Kremlin must accept a diplomatic route with Kiev. After the humiliating withdrawal of Russian soldiers from Kherson, Viktor Olovich said Vladimir Putin should consider peace negotiations with Ukraine. The Russian political expert said that the conflict had stretched for more than eight and a half months and that Russian troops had only managed to seize Kherson briefly. Some Ukrainians see the departure of Russian soldiers from the Kherson area as the beginning and end of the conflict. Viktor Olovich said that Vladimir Putin needs creative diplomacy to prevent utter capitulation to Ukraine in the following months. Olovich said that Russia now needs highly skilled, non-standard, and creative diplomacy. Inventive use of military power is essential to travel between Scylla and Charybdis. Scylla represents submission, whereas Charybdis. Another expert added, capitulation or forceful surrender after some time? And fast, discussing an attack, stated Olovich. In 8.5 months, we should be realistic. Undoubtedly, we would all want to see tremendous success from the Russian army and more success in general. But, let's be realistic, in 8.5 months, Russia has managed to seize one regional center without a battle, only to be forced to abandon it. We want to launch a big attack and conquer Kiev with these resources. It is quite improbable that the president's February 24th goals will be attained. I concur, although, to be honest, we didn't have an offensive, at least not with the required troops. Since Russian soldiers retreated from Kherson and Ukrainian forces freed the region, Ukrainian officials have said that this strongly indicates that their country would win the conflict. Oleksiy Gakarenko, a member of the Ukrainian parliament, stated, he declared that this was Russian land and that it would remain such forever. Consequently, this is more evidence that the United States and its allies can win this conflict and will do so with the assistance of Ukraine. In a recent speech, the president of Ukraine explained that Ukraine's troops would have to fight for a bit longer to liberate the rest of the country, similar to how the region of Kherson was released from Russian forces. Mr. Zelensky said that Kherson is now free. What does it indicate? For Ukraine, this liberating operation by our defense forces is reminiscent of many prior battles that turned the tide of previous conflicts. These battles exemplified these changes, after which it was clear who would emerge victorious even though the ultimate victory was still up for grabs. It is comparable to D-Day when the Allies landed in Normandy. It was not yet the end of the battle against evil, but it had already dictated future events. 
This is just how we are now feeling. Now, when Kherson is available, to free the whole of our territory from the Russians, we must continue to battle, to fight. However, if we are sure that victory will be ours anyway, shouldn't we strive to apply our peace formula to spare thousands of lives and prevent additional global instability?